This video will help you prepare for creating your first Neatline exhibit. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. Remember that a Neatline exhibit enables you to present a narrative that visualizes Omeka items in space and time. Viewers of a Neatline exhibit can interact with your content by reading it in the text or waypoints widgets on the right-hand side of the interface. They can click on points, lines, or polygons in the central window, or on points or time spans in the bottom timeline to select Neatline records and Omeka items. You can add external media such as video, 3D models, or sound clips to augment your narrative. As you begin planning your Neatline exhibit, consider the following questions. What is the overall story you are telling? How will you integrate your Omeka items into that story? What kinds of additional text and media will you add to your records to create a narrative around these Omeka items? How will your items and records be ordered in the text or waypoints, map, and timeline? How will they appear on your map, timeline, and in waypoints or text? What kinds of map or image layers will you use? How will content be shown, hidden, and layered on the map? A good best practice is to answer all of these questions in documentation that you and your collaborators maintain outside of Omeka and Neatline. Having written record of the decisions you make, your content, and how you style your content will help you in case you need to make major changes later, lose your work, or need to start over. Before you begin creating your Neatline exhibit, make sure that you have all of your content prepared. All of your Omeka items should have been entered, and while you can still return to edit them in Omeka's interface, you do want to have at least the items created so that you can add them into your Neatline exhibit. You'll want to have any files that you want to use as uh, map or image base layers or layers on top of Google satellite or street maps. You'll want to know which widgets you're using, You'll want to have much of your text for the Neatline exhibit already written and stored elsewhere, and you'll want to have any media that you want to embed identified. Uh, this includes any of the URLs or embed codes that you need to add it into Omeka items and Neatline records. To create your first Neatline exhibit, you'll want to make sure that you first have Neatline installed on your Omeka website. You'll know it's there because you have a Neatline item in your left-hand menu. If you do not see this, check your plugins list to be sure that you have Neatline suite of tools installed. This includes not only Neatline, but also Neatline widget simile timeline, Neatline Widget Text, and Neatline Widget Waypoints. If you do not see these in your plugins list, contact your site's administrator to ask that they add this to your site. In this Browse Exhibits page, this should look very similar to the Browse Exhibits page that we have for Omeka and for the Browse Items and Collections pages that we have in these areas above. To begin an exhibit, I will click the Create an Exhibit button, and as with Omeka Exhibits, I will need to add a little bit of metadata to create my first exhibit. At the top, I will need a title, and again, I will need a URL slug. Remember that that is the end of the URL that gives your exhibit a unique identifier that you can easily share with others. It has been automatically populated by Neatline, but I could choose to make this much shorter. And that will help me remember my URL later. Now we also have a narrative section for long format prose that will accompany the exhibit. This box will become important later when we look at the text widget, but for now we will skip this. 
Below these in initial metadata fields, we have a number of settings that we can arrange. First, there are widgets. Now, Neatline comes with uh, a mapping interface by default, but in order to add in a timeline, waypoints, or text, we need to add in what are called widgets, which are essentially mini extensions for our plugin. So plugins for plugins for Omeka. So when I click in the widgets text box, Simile Timeline and the other two uh, widgets will come up. So I will first select Simile Timeline and Waypoints. And we'll come back and look at the text widget later, but we do not want to have both text and waypoints activated at the same time. Next we have a spatial layers section. Let's look first at the default spatial layer, which is automatically set to OpenStreetMap. If you click the drop-down menu, you will find a number of default layers that can be added in as a map base map. I will start with Google Satellite. Note that the default spatial layer can actually be added to if you are interested in being able to add your own custom map layers, you can check out this tutorial by one of the Neatline developers. In enabled spatial layers, I can choose to have one or more spatial layers show up in a menu at the right hand side of my Neatline interface. So my users could toggle between Google Satellite, OpenStreetMap, or any of these other layers on the list. I will skip this step for now and move down to my next set of steps. Below default spatial layer, we find image layer. Remember that in some cases you may have a Google Satellite image or OpenStreetMaps as a base layer, but in other instances you may wish to simply have a static image as your base layer that is entirely disconnected from any kind of geospatial coordinates. This is where you would add in a link for an image layer. We'll come back to this and look at this example later. Next, we have zoom levels, which controls the number and range of zoom that your users have. We'll leave this at 20 for now. And then we have a section for WMS address and WMS layers. These two fields enable us to add georectified images into or on top of our Google Satellite or other base map layer. We will again come back to this section later. The very bottom, I can click public to make my exhibit public, but while I'm editing it, I may want to keep it private by unchecking that public checkbox. Then I will click save exhibit, and at the top of the Neatline exhibits list, I should now have my exhibit created. It will give me the title of my exhibit the date that it was created, the number of Omeka items that have been added to it, and whether or not it has been made public. Below the title for my exhibit, I have a number of buttons, a public view, full screen view. These are both views uh, of my Neatline exhibit from the public side of the site. I can go back to that form that we just filled out by clicking on Exhibit Settings and I can delete my Neatline exhibit by clicking this delete. But remember that there is no undo in Omeka, so if you choose to delete a Neatline exhibit, make sure you have all of your content saved elsewhere in case you need to access it later. Let's take a look at what our Neatline looks like right now by clicking on Full Screen View, and I'm going to open that in a new tab. If you receive a message asking you to share your location with your website, you may need to click Share Location in order for Google Satellite to work. So here is our beginning base uh, for our Neatline exhibit. We have a map that is roughly corresponding to my location. We also have a timeline at the bottom. But Essentially, our exhibit is empty because there is no content that has been added on top of the map or timeline, and we do not have our waypoints list along the right-hand side. In order to add in this information, 
we would need to click on the History of Durham Architecture title to navigate to Neatline's editing interface. If I wanted to have an image layer instead of a map base layer, I would need to return to my exhibit settings, and I would need to have an image ready to add into this image layer text box. This image needs to be available online, and it needs to be the URL to the image itself. It's also a good idea to have an image available for the layer that is between 2,000 and 6,000 pixels wide. The higher the resolution of your uh, image layer, the more detail or the farther in you will be able to zoom. However, uh, once an image layer gets above 6,000 pixels wide uh, and the larger the file becomes, the slower it will be to load in Neatline. I have in my Browse Items section a map that I would like to use for my Neatline base layer. In order to add my image layer, I have added it to an item first and then I can go to that item file, view public page, and again view that image file specifically and grab the link from my browser. I would then return to the Neatline Exhibits page and under image layer paste in that URL. And again remember here is that image file extension at the end of my URL. I can then click Save Exhibit, and if I return to that full screen view, when I navigate to view, view full screen for the first time on an image base layer, most likely this is what will load in my browser window. This is simply the bottom left corner of my image uh, and I will need to zoom out and pan to be able to locate my image layer. Surrounding my image layer I should see nothing but white space uh, and this is really pointing out that this image is entirely divorced from any kind of uh, geospatial system. we'll see in Neatline's editing interface how we can set up our exhibit to automatically load to a view such as this one rather than that bottom left corner of the map.